Hello everybody, here we are today doing our season preview over the St. Louis Blues, talking about whether or not the Blues are being underrated heading into the year. So before we get started with it, please make sure to subscribe if you're new to me or hockey, whatever the case may be. That being said, let's get on into it. So last season, the Blues finished with 92 points on the year, and as we all know, they failed to make the playoffs. This was the second straight year they weren't in the postseason, and there were some ramifications because of that. You would see Craig Berube, coach that won the Stanley Cup with them back in 2019, get the boot, and that was not ideal. But I think the good thing about this team is they ended up finishing off the year relatively well, and they are a side that just feels very unpredictable. Even though maybe the offseason wasn't as impactful in a positive way that they were hoping for, this still does feel very much like a team where everybody's wondering, what are they? Could they be a dark horse to get to the playoffs? And are they a dark horse if they made it into the playoffs? And what could they do there? Those are all really puzzling and intriguing pieces for this year. So now we get to talk about some storylines for this team entering this season. So the first storyline is going to be whether or not we get to see some forwards make a name for themselves. And this isn't entirely a great storyline title that I should have with it. But I do think from what we've seen with St. Louis, like some other sides where we focus in on their top six, we know that they're going to have those great players. St. Louis has got multiple young, good players that are under long-term extensions. And they look like they're only going to be getting better in the year. I'm really excited to see what Jake Neighbors could do this year. I'm not saying that he's up there with guys like Cairo or anything like that. But I'm hoping for big things for him. But I'm looking at some other guys that could help them become a playoff team again. And I know the difference between a 92-point team and a 102-point team is just having extra guys that can help you out. And I look at this bottom six and I think there's a few names that I'm intrigued about where maybe they're not going to be a superstar. But you are saying, could they help St. Louis be that dark horse team? Matthew Joseph, Kasper Kapanen, and then of course Alexander Tixie. Now Matthew Joseph is interesting to me because he ended up playing previously with the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Ottawa Senators and while he's never ever been able to really break through and have a big year and by big year it's obviously lower expectations for him but still bigger you are wondering if that's finally going to happen. I'm hoping that he gets some minutes here and an opportunity to prove himself on a St. Louis team that really could be an all-hands-on-deck type situation when it comes to trying to make it to the playoffs. And I'd like to see that happen now as for Kasperi Kapanen. He played with St. Louis, I believe, last year and had a pretty disappointing year, but he can be a goal scorer. And I want to see if things can go better for him. He's previously scored 20 goals one time, I believe, at one point in his career and has been able to get double digits over the course of the year if he had a breakthrough. As unlikely as it probably seems after he had kind of a quiet year. You wonder if that would go well for them. And then you have Alexander Texier. Texier feels odd here because he has been able to play five seasons with Columbus Blue Jackets and set, I believe, a career high for points this past year, even though he wasn't playing a crazy ton of minutes, about 15 minutes a night. But he's also been in a situation where he's been in and out of the NHL for personal reasons. And that's why I'm kind of wondering if these actually would all pan out and could it all happen within this year. Not going to say that it is going to happen, but just saying that St. Louis might have a little bit of something here. Again, we're not going to get our hopes up too high for a team that seems like they could be high and low and whatnot. So just watch out for the bottom six, kind of like we talked about with LA. But of course, everybody knows, especially with this top six, you're going to be focusing on them as you've got guys like Cairo, Bushnevich, etc. The second storyline is whether or not St. Louis can be the more consistent, better version of themselves. And this is pretty much, you know, just out there with what I'm saying. Can St. Louis be the good side, if you will? Because they were very Jekyll and Hyde last year. So looking at this team, they were able to have a really good record against some quality sides in the NHL last year. But like we've talked about with St. Louis earlier, a couple months ago, I think we did two videos over them. They were a side that was the only team in the NHL to be winless against the San Jose Sharks, the team that had the first overall pick this year, the worst team in the NHL. And then they were winless against the Columbus Blue Jackets, another bottom four side. They only picked up, I believe, two wins against the Arizona Coyotes and were a team that I wouldn't have been surprised if they would have had a poor record against Chicago, but they actually went undefeated against them. But that is not going to work this year. You can't be a team that is playing those bad sides and then continuing to not pick up wins, or at least, at the very least, picking up points, which is why I'm saying when they are able to beat those other good, high-quality teams that are even above them in the standings, you say, how can they not beat St. Louis? How are you getting shut out by the Sharks? How are you dealing with all of these things and making it look like San Jose is a legit team? I know hockey can be a weird sport, but it is just something that was very odd from last year for a team that wasn't too, too far back of the playoff spot. But then another thing they're going to have to get better about as well, too, is the fact they went 9-19-1. and one. When they were trailing, I believe after the first period, there is not necessarily a whole lot of comeback in this team. And I think a lot of it was allowing multi-goals in the first period where they would be down by, you know, 2 nothing, maybe 3 nothing. There were some games where Bennington didn't get off to the best start, and that is something that is, you know, can happen on a night-to-night -night basis. 
but it's not going to be able to happen consistently. You can't be a team that if you're not going to be able to come back and rally back, you can't go down 2 to nothing after the first and say, well, we're going to make the playoffs once we get together a good run because there's too much of the highs and lows. You have to be that better version of yourself because when this team is at their best, absolutely, I'd say they're a playoff side. When they are at their worst, you can see why they haven't been in the playoffs in two years and it could be a third straight year. So just being better, even if it doesn't mean that they are blowing out teams that are bad, just playing more consistent. Then my third and final storyline here is who's going to step up on the blue line. So Tory Krug looks like he could be out for the year and we've already talked about this. I think we covered the Krug injury in its video of itself but with Krug he may not be a Norris caliber defenseman but he's still going to be missed out of this lineup. He's still a guy that plays a lot of minutes for this team and looking at some of the numbers from last year actually was good in some categories. So of course you know, with the way that minutes are going to be broken up, that's going to be a little bit of a question. As you have Krug, it's going to be out of your top four, and you wonder about that. I think my bigger concern is looking at things like the PK and the power play. So looking at the PK, you're going to be seeing Nick Letty and then Colton Pareko probably eating up a lot of minutes on the top unit, and playing together and having that happen. But then you're also going to be seeing, again, that second unit where you're going to be wondering, with Krug being out, how things are going to work out and if things will go well there too. As for the power play, this is big too because Krug was brought in as this guy that could be productive off the power play and be just one of those guys that can, you know, rack up assists on the main advantage and help out this team in this regard. He's out, so then you wonder, well, who could go out there and possibly help them? Scott Periovich is going to be one that you watch out for, but again, he is a little bit different, and with the power play, you don't want to mess with the personnel and how everything gets set up out on the main advantage, so I'm not necessarily saying that that is going to be the perfect scenario. You couldn't just plug him in necessarily, say, oh, this is going to work just fine. But I'm just saying, this is where you're going to see more of the absence on the special teams. And this is a little bit concerning because of the fact that the Blues weren't particularly great last year. They weren't dominant on the power play. They weren't dominant on the PK. And that's where you start to get a little bit scared. And I'm eagerly watching out for this because I feel Krug has been kind of a scapegoat a lot of times when this team has underperformed. And they've talked about that. But we can't, you know, throw this all on him. In fact, when you looked at a lot of these defensive pairings, Last season, not a lot of them, in fact, most of them didn't have great numbers, especially a lot of the defensemen that played together 5-on-5 five five for the entirety of the year. I'm just saying, again, we're going to be looking at this, and I do think there's going to be that loss as top power play unit, second PK unit, and maybe even on 5-on-5. Five five. I don't know how this is going to work out, but I do think that if you know certain pairings don't work perfectly well and some other things struggle, then maybe some fans or more of the skeptics will look at this and say, well, Krug might not be that star for us, but he is actually a productive player for us. So I'm going to be looking as well to see who can possibly step up and be one of those guys that helps out this blue line and stabilizes it, if not maybe even makes it better. So overall, what are my thoughts on the Blues? Well, they have me feeling a little bit confused. I feel like this could be the team that has me a little bit more up in the air compared to some other sides. And at the moment, I'm leaning towards I don't think they'll make the playoffs. This is swayed in part because they're going to be heavily reliant on their top six. They've not got great special teams play. They have spotty goaltending especially. And all of those things are kind of making me scream, not a playoff side. But if they are playing their best, I do think that they are a playoff caliber team. And that's where I'm on the fence. But I will say this. A lot of people are talking about, oh, whether or not they could be a dark horse. This is what I'll say. They are being considered a dark horse to get to the playoffs. Not a dark horse if they got into the playoffs. And that is an entirely different thing. If you're a dark horse to get to the playoffs, the talk is whether or not they're going to be able to go on and make it there. Not if they get in there, could they go on a run and maybe even win the cup. I'm not going to say that they couldn't. Because, again, anything can happen, especially in the NHL. But this team is far from being the side that I think some people are making it out to be. Although I think, again, a lot of people are relatively realistic and understanding that this team does have talent. And they are willing to have contract that they spend, especially in their forward group, that is keeping these guys here and trying to make them compete. And I think especially with those younger guys, if they took a big leap, yeah, I see them making the playoffs. But I don't know. Do you think they make it as a top three in the division? Do you think they make it as a wild card? I want to know all your thoughts on St. Louis this year because I can't really seem to figure out what I want them to be or what I think they'll be. So anyway, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Also, please make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. Everybody stay safe. Have a great night. And you go love hockey, all right. Goodbye, Brigadiers and Brigadettes. This is your captain signing off. Have a great night.